guys and welcome back. I just got back from seeing Men in Black International, which was directed by F. Gary Gray, one of my favorite directors who actually directed Friday, Straight Outta Compton, and Fan of the Furious, and stars Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson, and Liam Neeson. This tells the story of a woman named Molly Wright, a new MIB recruit who is assigned to the UK branch along with Henry, a top agent in the MIB branch, only to find out a mole is hidden within the organization. Alright, let's get into the positives. And yes, I know I signed. The look, you know, the cinematography and the lighting was done really well. It still had that atmospheric look that the first three had. The gadgets and gadgets and guns, they were pretty cool. There's only two characters in this that I actually liked. Liam Neeson, who plays the head of the London organization, which is where they go to in this film. I like just about anything he does. And there's this little itty bitty alien named Pawnee who is voiced by Kumail Nanjiani. And I thought he was pretty funny. When he first shows up, he was a little annoying. But I sort of grown to like him as the movie progressed, especially by the second act. Are you a queen? Hmm? Indeed she is. I pledge loyalty eternal to you. No, 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 I'm not interested. Too late. I already pledged the loyalty. I wish you'd said no, no, no before. And this pains me to say, let's get into the negatives, and there's kind of plenty of them. This didn't feel like a Men in Black film, to be honest. Yes, it had aliens and men in suits, but I don't know, just compared to the first three, I get what they're trying to do. It's called Men in Black International. So I get the gist of what that title means, but still, it just didn't feel like a Men in Black film. And this may be coming off of a nostalgic point, so I apologize for that. It felt like one of those studio-like films where the studio just intervened too much. And I don't know what happened. If there was any conflict on set, I don't know. I hadn't read up in on anything, I hadn't heard anything, but I felt like if They'd have just left F. Gary Gray do his thing, do his direction thing. It probably would have been just as good as Fate of the Furious or Straight of the Compton, which was both massive hits because of what they were and what the studios, I felt like, let him do for those films. I just felt like for this film, the studio left their mark, kind of stained it. Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson's chemistry wasn't good. They tried to be funny, but they just couldn't do it. There was no Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. That was the missing ingredient. And again, nostalgic era. I'm sorry. But hey, really I'm not. Because I grew up on the first three, and there ain't no reason why I should feel sorry for that. But Chris Hemsworth, he just... Felt to me like a drunken sailor who just kept on hanging on for dear life with his lines. And Tessa Thompson just felt really bland. She just couldn't do it. Their chemistry may have worked better in the MCU, but not in this. Because they did both play in the MCU together as well. But in this, they should have quit their day job. I'm sorry to say, they're really fantastic actors. They didn't save it. Like I said, the missing ingredient was Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. There wasn't much there with the story. You don't really get to find out what the bad guy's intentions are. They just show up. And they start killing people and taking their form. Speaking of the villains, they were crap. This is the film that's actually making me say, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I prefer the second film's villain over the ones in this. Just being honest. The pacing was off, it felt a little bored, and that goes back to what I said about how it didn't really feel like a Men in Black film. It probably is because of Will Smith and Tommy Jones' absence. I don't like, altogether, I just felt like this was kind of an unnecessary sequel. You do kind of see Will Smith and Tommy Jones, but not in person. And it shows in the trailer, so it's not ruining anything. But you see a painting of Will Smith and Tommy Jones aiming like this at a big creature. I couldn't tell what that was, but I want to say it was the bug from the first. <laughs> Which I guess was a sort of a nice throwback, if you want to call it that. My final thoughts, I didn't hate it, hate it, hate it. I didn't cringe in my stomach when I watched it, but it just wasn't the best. It, I felt like if this was done differently, and maybe Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones at least made a cameo in it, 
it probably would have been a little better. And they could have added more to the story. Instead of just these two villain-like aliens taking other people's forms and just say, oh, we'll just create Hovac and do whatever the hell we want. Uh, we're not going to explain our plan. No, we're not like Boris the Animal. Because he was cool. We're crap. We're, we're idiots. Stick with the first three. Save your money. Wait for this one to come out on Redbox or stream it. If you want to go see it, that's fine. And like I always say, be your own critic. I'm giving Men in Black International a C-. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What did you think of Men in Black International? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave your comments down below and let me know your thoughts. Stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon. Child's Play is coming out this weekend. I'm very excited about that one. Again, thank you so much guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon to a computer screen or a cell phone near you. Peace to Rip Out.